Hello, welcome to this exercise here. We're going to work with two dimensional arrays. What we need to do is create a two dimensional array with 12 rows and two columns. So this is giving us the dimensionality of this array. The first column, if you can visualize two columns here, the first column will correspond to the month of the year. Uh, one will correspond to January and 12 will correspond to December. The second column will be the revenue that a lemonade stand makes in that month. So what we're doing is we have a little database of how much money this lemonade uh, stayed, uh, stand made each month of the year. So we want to load the array with the following information. And for each month of the year, we provide the dollar amount that that lemonade stand made. So you can think of this being column one. Of course, we're not going to store the letters. We're going to put uh, January is one and February is two and so on. And then this column here is the month and the next column over in the array is going to be the revenue. So we want to first of all build the array and store this information in it. Then we want to use a loop to access this array that we created and print out the revenue for each month of the year. All right, so what we do is we come down here and inside of our main method we create a two-dimensional array. We're calling it revenue array. The two, the double brackets here indicate that it's a two-dimensional array. The int in front means that uh, it's basically going to hold integer data, and that makes sense because we're using numbers to represent the months and numbers to represent the dollars as well. So every element will be an integer. And on the right-hand side, we're providing the dimensionality. So the first number is the number of rows, 12, and the second is the number of columns. So you should think of this as two columns. Uh, everything has 12 rows. Now we need to load the information in. We already said that the first column is going to represent the month, uh, 1 through 12. And so we have January being 1, February being 2, all the way to December being 12. And we're loading that in. You need to see how to read this here. This is essentially row 0, column 0, row 1, column zero and so on. So what we're doing is we're putting these numbers in the first column because notice the column is zero in all cases here. So we're putting these numbers uh, in the various rows, always the very first column in our matrix here, one through 12. And then down here we're putting the dollar amounts uh, in the next column over. So here that's why everything is one here because it's the next column over. So we start counting at zero in arrays. This is column zero. This is column one. The one through 12 is because we're, we're building a table with 12 rows like this in both cases. So we load the months down in the first column and we load the money in the second column there. So we do all of that storing the information then we build a loop that's going from i is equal to 0 to less than or equal to 11. The reason we're doing it like this is because since we have 12 rows and since we start talking about arrays in terms of its index which always starts at 0 basically the rows go from 0 to 11. That gives us 12, 12 rows. All right. So we're going to start looking from i is equal to 0 going up to 11. In other words, we're going to examine every row of our two-dimensional array, and we'll increment through. And then we do a print statement for month number, and then we access the element revenue array. Uh, notice we have the 0 here, so we're looking in the first column, or column uh, corresponding to, to that very first column that we have. That's why there's a 0 here. And then every time we come through this loop, we're looking at... Uh, first row, second row, third row, fourth row. So what we're doing is with this we're accessing this information that we have previously stored. The zero here in the second column is remaining the same and we're as we loop through we're incrementing down through this uh, element here accessing each individual row. So we're putting uh, 1 through 12 essentially is what we're doing here. Um, the revenue was, and then we access the array again, exactly the same thing. We're looking at the ith row, but now we're looking the next column over. So every time we come through it, we're printing out the month number and the corresponding uh, amount of money that is associated with that. So let me go ahead and save it and run it. That's the entire program. After that loop executes, everything's finished. And then this is what we get. And you can see for month number one, the revenue was $34. For month number two, the revenue was $44 which is exactly what we said. Now I know it can be a little you know, confusing if you've never done two-dimensional arrays before. It's not something you use every day in programming, but this is a good example of when you might actually use one. We might want to set up a two-dimensional array to hold some information. And you have to visualize it. The trick is to visualize it like a table. You want to think of it as two columns. The first column is the month, the second column is the money. So whenever I come over here and I have an expression like this, 
I've fixed this zero fixes it in the first column. And as I rip through the loop, I'm printing out all of the rows. Now in the first column, it means I'm printing out the months. That's why what gets printed in these positions here. Now in the next time we access it, we're locking down to the next column over, which is where our money is stored. And as we rip through the loop, we're going down the rows, but here we're printing out the information in the second column over. And that's what prints these numbers out here. So as you design your program, you need to figure out how do you plan to store the information in your array, what column contains what and so on. And then, you know, you document that. And then as you use the program, as you as you continue writing the program, you store information and access information appropriately from that. So make sure you understand this is definitely not the only way to do this, um, but it's, I think, a decent way to illustrate how we use two dimensional arrays in Java.